This is Spring Theory, the mousetrap car on creating a template for gear placement. Hi, I'm Dawn DeWitt. Charles Tharp and I will be providing you with detailed information about every aspect of mousetrap cars to help you design the best mousetrap car for your needs. We have many years experience with mousetrap cars, so stick with us to the end of the video. We think you'll find it a good investment of your time. Be sure to share this video with your friends and save it to watch again later. If you like our video, click like and subscribe to our channel so you have direct access to new content as it becomes available. Because mousetrap cars do not grow on trees. This Spring Theory lesson will focus on creating a template for a single pair of gears which can then be used to incorporate that gear pair into a mousetrap car without failure. This concept can be applied to adding additional gear trains as well, but more on that in another lesson. When you get your gears home from the hobby shop or open the box full of gears that was delivered to your door, I can assure you there are no instructions or suggestions included about how to use them. Let this be your set of instructions that will work with all types of spur gears, the most common type of gear. Another Spring Theory lesson will explain how to organize your gears for use. We usually use plastic gears that have an axle diameter of 0.3 centimeters, equivalent to 1 8 of an inch diameter since they're fairly low mass and they work well with generic bamboo skewers that can be purchased at a variety of stores. We measure them or look at the label to see if they'll fit the gears before we buy and then select those that are straight and round with no flat spots or irregularities for use. As for the gears that are paired together to make a gear ratio, a higher gear ratio, if that is your aim, is obtained by using a pair of gears that consists of the largest and smallest gears in a set. This yields the greatest number of rotations from the output gear, the gear with fewer teeth. Gears come in sets or families with a certain pitch that makes them work together, so make sure your gear pair is from the same set. Watch the Spring Theory Mousetrap Car video on introduction to gears for how to calculate a gear ratio and distance multiplier. Creating a template helps to reduce small errors that occur when repeating a task over and over again, as in placing gears into a mousetrap car. The template that is being created here will later be used to situate the gears into the gearbox of the mousetrap car, which will be made of the same material. Construction of the gearbox will be the subject of a future Spring Theory lesson. An old or new gift card or hotel key card will be used to make the gear template. This plastic material is sturdy and allows for precise measurements and holes to be punched or drilled in it, and it is readily available. Blank or plain gift cards or key cards can be purchased on the internet. I will be using a craft punch like the one shown here to make the axle holes in my gift card material. This tool can be purchased from a well-stocked craft supply store that usually offers coupons for 40 or 50% off one item. The punch set comes with a bunch of different punch sizes. For these gears and axles, I'll be using the 0.3 centimeter or 1 8 inch diameter punch. First, I'll draw some baselines on the key card which are 0.5 centimeters from each edge. Marks to indicate an axle location will be drawn with crosshairs for accuracy of punching the holes. Additionally, I will draw several other radius lines that will be used for trial and error to get the placement of the gears just right. This can take several attempts. The bigger the teeth on the gear, the more tolerance for error there is, meaning that the gears might work in a range of distance up to two millimeters apart so the gears would work if they were a little closer or a little farther away from each other. But, the smaller the teeth are, the less tolerance there is for error. There's a smaller range of distance over which the gears will still work. There is an optimum distance between gears, and that is what we need to try to find. If it takes more tries, then it takes more tries. Do not settle for good enough here. Try to arrive at the best solution. 
proper spacing allows for ease of rotation when either gear is turned in either direction. For the gears in this scenario, the optimum distance between axle centers is 3.05 centimeters. Using the craft punch with the 0.3 centimeter punch head, I'll punch one of the intersections. In this template, this will be the permanent location for the small gear axle. The axle holes need to be prepped as if it were an actual gearbox. To prep the axle hole, roll up a small piece of sandpaper into a tube to sand the axle opening. Fit the small gear from the gear pair onto a length of axle so the end of the axle is flush with one face of the gear. Check the fit of the gear on the axle. It should be tight. If not, select another piece of axle material. Check the fit of the axle in the axle hole. The axle should spin freely. More sanding of the axle hole might be necessary to make the axle spin freely. Once the gear turns freely, not loosely in the opening, but freely, leave that axle hole alone. With the small gear on the axle and in the axle hole, place the large gear in the pair next to the small gear so that the teeth are meshing but not pushed together with great pressure. Look for the baseline on the key card through the axle hole on the large gear. Use a metric ruler and measure the distance from the center of the small gear axle to the center of the large gear axle hole to the nearest half of a millimeter. Refit the gears together and measure again. Do you get the same measurement? Once you're satisfied with your measurement, remove the gear and axle and measure from the axle hole center along the baseline and make a mark for crosshairs on the baseline to that distance and label the distance along that axis. Use the craft punch and punch the axle hole at the intersection. Use the ruler and measure between the axle centers. Does this meet with what your desired measure was? Sand the axle hole with the sandpaper tube. Check your work by replacing the large gear on a length of axle and inserting it into the newly punched hole. Check the fit. Do the gears turn smoothly and easily in either direction? Are the axles parallel to each other? If you can answer yes to these questions, it's an indication of a good fit. Sometimes you get lucky and get it right the first time. What if the gears are too far apart to even touch? What if they're touching but don't turn smoothly or the axles are angled in towards each other? This is an indication of a bad fit. Trial and error is how this problem is solved. If the gears are too close, measure again from the original corner axle hole along another previously drawn radius to measure a distance that puts the gears a little farther apart. Mark with the crosshairs, label with the distance, punch, sand, and check. Is it right? If the gears are too far apart, make a new mark that's slightly closer. Label, punch, sand, and check. Creating an accurate template outside of the mousetrap car produces successful results when you build. You must make sure that your template produces repeatable results. This will be good for the lifetime supply of these gears. If you get new gears, you'll need to create a new template. In this Spring Theory lesson, The Mousetrap Car on creating a template for gear placement, we have shown you how to determine the optimum distance between gears in a pair through a process of trial and error. This is how to work like an engineer. Be deliberate with your measurements and methods because it matters. Gear placement and use of multiple gear pairs and arrangement of components will be discussed in another lesson. We hope you save, like, and share this video and subscribe to our channel so you will have direct access to new Spring Theory content. Until next time, because mousetrap cars do not grow on trees.